Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. When you get there, just holler amen. Chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 8 through 12. <clears throat> Everybody got it? Amen, amen. Starting at verse eight, <clears throat> they read from the book, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priests and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then, then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed, calmed all the people saying, be quiet for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, that as I begin speaking this message that you put in my heart, Lord, I pray, Lord, that as it goes forth, my Lord, my God, you do, my Lord, everything that you want to accomplish here today, Lord. Lord, I just ask, Lord, that you anoint my tongue, Lord, that as your words come out, Lord, they don't hear or see Wayne, Lord. They hear and see the word of the living God. Lord, have your way in this room in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This message is entitled, I kept it simple, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Point number one, we have joy in the Lord because of what he has done. We have joy in the Lord because of what he has done. When the Bible talks about joy, the joy of the Lord, it's not talking about feelings or what we may experience when we get excited or happy. So what then is the joy of the Lord? In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2, Paul is encouraging the Corinthians to fulfill their promise here, to take up a collection for the Jerusalem churches. And in order to encourage their generosity, he points to the generosity of the churches in Macedonia. He says in 2 Corinthians 8.2, for in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overwhelmed in a wealth of generosity on their part. These churches were going through severe, severe and extreme trials while living in extreme poverty. However, they were still filled with an abundance of joy, the scripture says. They were experiencing serious, serious affliction. I wanna, I'm going to keep mentioning that but still had great joy. They had joy in the midst of affliction. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3, chapter 3, verse 17 and 18 says, though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. This is a joy in the most difficult circumstances that is also present in the worst possible conditions known. How do you explain something like that? How do you explain having a joy when there's no food? How do you explain joy when you're in poverty, when you have no money? 
Amen. How do you explain? How do you have a joy going through all those diff difficult circumstances in life? What does that tell us about Job? What does that say joy is? It says it's not related to feelings. It's not related to circumstances. There's a peace filled confidence that comes with joy. And that peace filled confidence is because of the character, acts, and promises of a living God. He goes on to say in uh, Habakkuk 3 in verse 19, he says, God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. They were dealing with crop failure, the death of their animals, which was devastating to Judah. But Habakkuk affirmed that even in the times of loss and starvation, he would rejoice in the Lord. His feelings were not controlled by the events that were around him, by the circumstances, but by faith in God's ability to give him the strength. So he decides, he made a decision to, he chose to rejoice in the Lord, regardless of what was going on. That tells us joy has nothing to do, again, with feelings. It comes down to making a choice, a choice each and every day, not based on what we go through or feel. I'm going to keep saying that. Not based on what we go through or what, what, what we feel. What allows us as believers to have a peace-filled confidence is found in the character of God. That would, that's experiencing the joy of the Lord because he is sovereign. Amen. If you read the scriptures, if you open the book, you'll see declaration after declaration, story after story that tells us of the character of God. We'll see that he is love. You'll notice that he is kind. You'll read that he is holy. He is also just. He's powerful. He is also very wise. He carries all the wisdom in the world. And the list goes on. When we know those things to be true about God, we have a reason to be filled with joy at all times. Psalm 28, 7 says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in a song. The confidence of the psalmist here is in place in the very character of God. He says, the Lord is my strength and my shield. The psalmist made a decision. He decided to stick to the truth of God's word by saying, my heart trusts in God. As he trusts in God, guess what he experiences? He experiences the very help of God. The help that he asked God for. How do we know this? Because he says, I am help. He says, my heart, it leaps for joy. Joy is possible because for the psalmist, he has experienced what God has done. Because he decided to stick to the truth of God's word. We're able to rejoice because of what God has done for us. Isaiah 61.10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns, adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels, he rejoices in the Lord. Again, because, what, for, because of what God has done for him. And I'm not talking just about blessing, material, money. He provides salvation for us. And if it, that's all he has provided for us, that's enough. That should be more than enough 
for him to get our attention and for us to be glad, amen, with the word, with, with, with the decisions that he makes and what he does. So we're drawn to the Lord. So that we're drawn to him consistently as we face any and every circumstance in our life. He says that God has given him salvation. Salvation. He didn't say God because God has given me money, because God has blessed me with land. No, he said salvation. God has done so much for us, amen, as his children. But with two, the body of Christ is too focused on what has not been done for us or the prayer that has not been answered yet. Can anyone here remember what God has done for them? Do we, can we remember when we were first saved, when the message of salvation was presented to us? Can we go back to that time and rejoice in the Lord and be glad with what he has done in that alone? God says he will never leave us. He says he will never let us go. He's always waiting to restore us. He's not the problem, church. Even when Adam and Eve sinned, God still promised to restore his people. Even when he flooded the earth, God still promised to restore his people. Even when Noah and his descendants sinned, God still promised to save them. When Israel rejected God and the Pharisees rejected Jesus, God continued to work out his plan of salvation in order to redeem and restore his people by giving us the one and only, his one and only son, Jesus Christ, so that all who believe in him will repent of their sins, acknowledge that they are far from God, amen? And they will not die. They will have everlasting life because they come to a place of repentance. We too can rejoice because of that. And also always remember, always remember, always remember when God saved you, when he breathed the breath of life into your spirit, restoring your soul and giving you us wisdom, amen, and direction. He has shown many of us how to navigate through what we call life, through difficult situations by being led by his Holy Spirit. He's the one who made a way when there was absolutely no way for us to come back into relationship with a loving God. Amen. He has protected and provided for each and every believer in ways that are beyond our understanding. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the light. He's the one that opens and shut doors that no one else can. Psalm 16, 11 says, you make known to me the path of life. You don't know what you're here for. You don't know why you exist. You don't know your purpose. The word of the Lord will reveal that to you. Psalm 1611 says, the psalmist said, you make known to me the path of life. He didn't tell God his plan and say, God, I'm doing this. No, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness, not a little bit, fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Amen? John 15, verse 10 and 11 says, If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide, in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy, this is Jesus speaking, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. The joy of the Lord is available to each and every believer. If you're here today and you're, and you're a believer, grab what's yours. If you're here today and you're not a believer, amen, that's when you, you have to know that Jesus died for your sins. 
Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross at Calv Calvary, suffering a gruesome, gruesome torture. God sent Jesus, his one and only son, to die for this world, a sin-sick world, amen, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have life everlasting, everlasting life. God has provided for us, and we're walking around depressed. We're walking around sad. We're walking around with our heads down, not knowing what to do. You know what to do. You just don't want to do it because the answers are in the book. He said it. He covered it. That joy is only available because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross at Calvary. Only available because of what he's done on the cross at Calvary. Point number two. We have joy in the Lord because of his promises. We have joined the Lord because of his promises. We can rejoice in the Lord because his promises are absolutely certain. Joy is also found in the promises of God in which we are to place our hope. Amen. So, um, and in his presence only, like the psalmist said in, in Psalm 1611, in his presence only is the fullness of that joy that we have been looking for our whole lives. We go on our lives. We go about our lives with an emptiness, trying to fulfill it with people, trying to fulfill it with things, trying to fulfill it with success, with money, in your career, with your job. All those things are fine. But how come when we have all those things, there's still something missing that we can't put our hand on? We can't put our finger on what's missing. And it's the joy of the Lord because it's not based upon outer extremities. It's not based upon what we get as far as material or finances. It's based upon what God has done. What a great promise of God to know that the fullness of your joy, the fullness of our joy is found only in the presence of the Lord. When we are dragged and beat down by discouragement, and in a lot of cases, depression, we're being oppressed, we're being squeezed because of our circumstance, it can be hard to rejoice in the Lord. That's why we have what's called the Word of God to always go back to. We have the very breath of the living God to go back to. Hebrews 10, chapter 10, verse 23 says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. How many believe that? That God can be trusted to keep his promise. We have to remind ourselves of the very promises of God that are found only in the word of God, because that is the only way that the believer can be certain of who God is and what God has done throughout the years. Amen. And what he is capable of doing. We can find joy even in the most difficult of circumstances, regardless of what we're facing or surrounded or what we're going through, experiencing. It does not matter. We get to experience that joy. Joy is a peace-filled confidence the believer has because of the character, the acts, and the very promises of God it has nothing to do with us. Only thing it has to do with us is make a choice. Back to Nehemiah 8. After the Babylonian exile, the Jews have returned to their land. And under Ezra, they rebuilt the temple. Under Nehemiah, they rebuilt the walls around Jerusalem. And when the walls were finished, they returned to live in the land. After some time, Nehemiah called them together to, and, and gathered them around. Ezra began reading the scriptures. In Nehemiah 8, verses 8 through 12, when I started off reading, it was Ezra reading the scriptures. They had not heard the word read in a long time at this point. It's been a while. The people listened attentively, and the priests explained the meaning 
of the scriptures. As they listened, they began to weep. If you read those five verses, they began to weep. Why? They began to weep because they realized that they had not kept the law of the Lord. Amen. And that they had been disobedient to God because they were not um, keeping the law. But Ezra, the priests and the scribes told them that they should not weep. Because this was a sacred day to the Lord. It was not a day for weeping. It was a day for rejoicing. So Nehemiah says in verse 10, he goes on to say, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. And send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. He was telling them that this was a day of great spiritual renewal and that they should not weep. This is not a day of weeping. Rather, it should be a day to rejoice because the joy of the Lord is their strength. The joy of the Lord that protects us from the weakening effects of discouragement and depression, amen, that same joy is the joy they were experiencing here. And when we choose the joy of the Lord, we are able to interpret, we are able to walk through life and interpret with the knowledge in the presence and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, amen, because of the joy of the Lord that is found only in the presence of a living God. Which will lead us always back to the word. Isaiah 41 10 says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. This is the Lord. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So how can we, do we rejoice in the Lord since joy is not a feeling, but a choice? And remember, the joy is, joy is to have a peace-filled confidence about life because of the character, acts, and promises of a living God. It means we can choose to believe we have to choose to believe to and obey the word of the Lord above all else. When we allow the joy of the Lord to truly be our strength and we come to a place in our life where we make a decision and we ultimately choose to lay it down and trust our living God, we are spiritually exercising obedience to the word of the living, living God. Philippians 4.4 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. We are all called to make joy in the Lord, a con constant choice. We have to consistently choose the Lord over our circumstance, the Lord over what we feel. That's why the word of God is so important because we are emotionally a wreck as people. We all are. Amen. And we tend to sometimes act out on our feelings and do or say what we're feeling. Amen. But we always have the word of God to keep us grounded. That's why we go back to the word because we'll mess it up. We'll make mistakes, but he has not yet. And he will never, ever make a mistake. The word of God says that his word will never fail. Never fail. These people started weeping, weeping as, as, as Ezra was reading the word of the Lord to them because they realized that they had sinned against a holy God. The whole picture suddenly became clear to them. They had a long history, Israel, of disobedience, which had resulted in the destruction of their nation, first by the Assyrians and then by the Babylonians. Their city and their temple had been destroyed because of their sin. The nation had just spent 70 years, I believe, yes, yeah, 70 years in exile. 
in Babylon. Now they turned to the land. They returned to the land and began to rebuild the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. They were beginning to settle into the land once again. And the word of God was read. When the word of God was read, they realized that they were currently engaging and acting out on some of the same sins which had gotten them exiled in the first place. They were overcome by a deep and profound realization of how desperate they really were for the word of God and the living king. Their hearts were overwhelmed with guilt, sorrow, and even fear. So then why was that a day to rejoice in the Lord? Because it was a day of renewal. It was a day when they realized their own weaknesses, their own sin, their own helplessness, and that they turned to God because of those things. They had come to the end of themselves. They had come to the end of their self-centeredness and decided at that moment, they chose at that very moment to put what was going on around them to the side, put what they were feeling to the side and acknowledge that they are sinners now standing before the holy God while the holy word of God was being read. Something happens when you acknowledge that you are a sinner, amen, and you repent of those sins and you invite the Lord to come into your life. You get saved. You get renewed. Everything starts fresh from that point on. Even though there are still problems, your circumstance may not change. It may look at like it's getting worse. But you now have access to the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. <clears throat> Amen. They were overcome by a deep, deep, profound realization of how desperate, how desperate they really were. How many of us are desperate? How desperate are you? Is the question I should ask. How desperate are you for answers? How desperate are you for guidance? How desperate are you for change? How desperate are you to get out or to get through your circumstance alive? It's all a matter of your, of your desperation. How desperate are you? Do you see yourself as a sinner before a holy God? Amen. That needs to repent and reconcile some of us to the Lord and others come to the first time to God. Their hearts were overwhelmed with guilt, with sorrow, and with fear. Why was this a day to rejoice in the Lord? Again, because this was a day of change. This was a day they made a choice. This was a day they chose God. They chose God at this time. And they had turned away from their sin and now faced a holy God with his holy word being read. So now they can go from weeping because of everything that's going on. Amen. And, or they were actually weeping because they were brought to a state of repentance and they realized, they recognized how desperate they were and how much their sin had consumed them. And they now had an opportunity to stand before the living God and confess and repent of their sins and be renewed. So now they can rejoice. The only one who can forgive them. Now they can lift up the name of a holy, mighty God. Now they can acknowledge a savior that can restore them and bring them back to life. We too can rejoice in the Lord when we humble ourselves and turn to God. Acknowledge that we can't do this. We are weak in and of ourselves. There's no way we can get through what we're going through. There's no way we can get to heaven without our relationship with Jesus. 
Romans 15, 13 says, <clears throat> I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace. Why? Because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope, hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again. Romans 15, 13. I pray that God, the source, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Your joy and your peace lies in the trust of the Lord. If you trust God with your life, if you trust the Lord that his word is true, if you trust him and always go back, remember, we always go back to what we trust. We always are drawn to what we believe to be right and true. So if we trust God, he will fill us with joy and with peace. And that trust will always lead us to the word of God. Because we trust him. So in any and every circumstance, we are drawn right back to the word of God. Sometimes even when we don't want to. Amen? Sometimes, so, so, sometimes we just get to a point in our lives where like, we know what to do, but we just don't do it. The Holy Spirit will still tug on you and lead you to the word of the Lord and bring to your remembrance what you have deposited in your spirit. God, the source of, of, of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then, then, then you will overflow with confident hope, which is joy, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Wow. You obtain joy and peace when you trust God. Then your lives, then you will overflow with a confident, confident hope because of the joy and the peace that your trust in God provides. God, amen, is a God you can trust. Remember, joy is a peace-filled confidence that the believer has because of the character, acts, and promises of a living God. That peace-filled confidence will overflow in the believer's lives when we learn to trust the word of God. It's only through the word of God that we will know that God restores, that God strengthens, that God provides. Amen? When we, in humility and trust, are, 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 are brought, amen, to a place that we now no longer rely on ourselves, but now we trust in the word of a living God, we can now rejoice regardless of the circumstance. Humility and trust are the keys to obeying the command in order for us to rejoice in the Lord. Nehemiah said, Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks because this day is sacred to the Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It was the joy of the Lord that made this such a sacred day. God had deliberately, pay attention, God had deliberately led them to this moment. He deliberately led them to this moment in time, the Israelites were returning to God on this special day. Amen. God will deliberately, deliberately put you in circumstances where you choose him, where you are forced to choose him and acknowledge you are a sinner. Amen. Standing before a holy God and that you can't do anything in and of yourself to make it to heaven. It's only through Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, whom he offered up as a sacrifice. It was only through Jesus Christ who laid down his life as a ransom for the world that we may be brought back into relationship with a living God. Joy comes when we realize that we have peace our lives together wrong, that we don't know what we're doing. We're not as bright as we think. And that we begin to discover God's instructions on how to navigate through life as a child 
a born again, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled child of God. Things change when you choose God. Amen. They right here on this day decided to choose God. Paul discovered the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 9. He writes, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. Paul desired God's healing. And he asked God for it. But instead, God offered him something else. He didn't give him what he asked for. Don't be mad at God when you don't get what you asked for. Amen? Sometimes we think we want something or need something. Most of the time, we don't. God gives him something else. He didn't give him what he asked for. Instead, God offered him the strength of his grace to get through it. He humbled himself and accepted that answer and discovered that there is, regardless of the circumstance, great, extremely great joy found in the Lord. To boast in weakness is to rejoice that in our weakness, we are able to experience the very, very power of a living God in our lives. And I'm going to close with this. I know it's quick. <clears throat> Nehemiah 8.12b says that they celebrated with great joy because they heard God's word and understood it. They were able to celebrate because they now understood the word of God. When you understand God's word, you can trust him. Amen. When you understand the word of the Lord, it's easier to place your trust in him. Regardless of the situation, if you can, if you're here today and you cannot trust the Lord and you are a believer, you just don't understand the word. Josh, and, it, and I say that his word is always true. His word will never fail. His word is from everlasting to everlasting. Joshua 21, 45 says this. Now, one word of all the good promises that the Lord had made to the house of Israel had failed. All of them came to pass. All of them came to pass. That's a word that don't fail. That's a God that doesn't fail. That's a God that there's never an end to. He's from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Let's choose church today to trust in the word of the Lord so that we can too have a peace-filled confidence about navigating through whatever it is, whatever it is that you need to navigate through in the at the current moment. Let's rejoice in the Lord because the joy of the Lord is truly our strength. That is where our strength is in placing our hope, placing our trust in a living God that has made a way when no one else can make. And the way that he made was to be back into relation, go back into a relationship with our Heavenly Father. No one else could have provided that. Not Buddha, not no one else. No one else could have provided that. A way to heaven. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. Amen. The scripture says that only through Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, can we enter the gates of heaven. He laid down his life for us. If that's not enough for us to rejoice about, I don't know what it is. We're never going to be happy then. If that's not enough, amen, it should be enough. <laughs> I don't even have words for it not being enough. It's more than enough. If, we've never, if I've never received another blessing, what Christ did was enough. If I never get a healing, what Christ did was enough. Amen. Our joy is not based on circumstances, situations, or feelings. Our joy as believers is found in the Lord. 
It's different than happiness. Amen. It's a joy, as we read in the scriptures, that stirs up within the believer in the harshest time. They lost their cattle. They were faced. They, they had no food. Amen. And some lived in poverty. But they had extreme joy. That's unexplainable. They had, an, they had joy in the Lord because it wasn't based upon their circumstance, what they feel. Amen. They trusted. They decided. Church, let's choose today. Choose God over your circumstance. Choose to trust God over your feelings. Your feelings will most likely, almost 100% of the time, fail you. But God will not. Amen? Amen? Let's stand as we close in prayer. The altar is open. If anyone needs prayer or would like to maybe rededicate their life to the Lord, or maybe give their life to the Lord because they want to experience this joy. Amen. There's going to come a point in our lives, maybe not now, where we're going to need this. Amen. I've been around a while, been through a lot of things. Amen. And, and, and there's that, that, that gap, that hole in our hearts and our lives. Nothing can fill that. Not money, not relationships with people, Men, women, whatever, whatever people are into, not cars, not houses, nothing. Been there, done that. Nothing. There's still going to be a void. Amen. Still going to be a void. But when we choose God, when we choose Jesus Christ, I'm not saying your life is going to be perfect. But what I am saying is when you decide to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, what you know to be true. He will fill you. He will guide you. And the joy of the Lord will absolutely positively be your strength. Because it's not depending upon feelings or what we go through. Amen? Amen. Father, I just thank you, Lord, <clears throat> that as your word went forth, my Lord, my God, I pray, Lord, that it landed on good soil, my Lord. I pray that it takes root, God. I pray, Lord, that we all learn, Lord, to trust in you, Lord. That we come to a place in our lives that when we hear the scriptures read, God, that we too, Lord, can be convicted, Lord, of our sin, Lord. And reminded that we are far away from God, Lord. And that I pray that we, when we realize that, we are brought to a place, Lord, where we are able to leave all those things behind. But leave the old sin behind, Lord. Leave what we're feeling, my Lord. Just put that to the side for now, Lord. Not focus on our circumstance, but that we can truly, truly, 100%, my Lord, place our lives in your hand. As we acknowledge, Lord, that we are sinners, Lord, standing before a holy God. That we, are, we have sinned, Lord against your word. I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us, Lord, will be brought to a place of repentance, Lord, where we make a choice to choose you over any and everything. Because you, God, your joy, Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord. Even in starvation, in the midst of starvation, even during affliction, Lord, even during pain, my Lord, in our physical bodies, even when we're being squeezed, Lord, by the enemy, Father God, or when we're faced with depression, oppression, Father, whatever it is, Lord, we may be dealing with, Lord. When we choose you, Lord, we will be filled with the joy of the Lord. And I pray, Lord, that each and every one of us can learn, Lord to develop a trust in your word, Lord, like no other, Lord, that regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it may even be, Lord, regardless of what's around us, regardless of what's running through our mind, we are always brought back to the word of a living God because your word says, Lord, that your word will never fail. Lord, have your way in this place, Lord. Holy Spirit, thank you for minister to each and every one of us. Lord, we bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord, and we thank you for your holy word, my God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Altars open. Anyone needs prayer? Or... <clears throat> Anyone Thank <laughs> you.